So when you get serious about launching or growing your business as a music producer, you will probably go down a rabbit hole on Reddit, Discord, and YouTube like you're doing now, hoping to find the perfect business advice that will solve your problems. And this might sound crazy, but what if I told you that not all great business advice can actually be found on the internet? I know, that sounds crazy. Much of it, however, can be found in good old fashioned books. And in this video, I'm going to show you 10 books that almost no one in the music industry ever talks about. And these are books that I often recommend to the producers that we advise. I'm Daniel from Dark Label Music, and our mission is to create the most sought after song makers in the world helping music producers become more in demand. I've split these books into four different categories, self, sales, people, and principles. And there will be a bonus book at the end as well, so don't miss that. For the self category, it's important to understand that most producers think they have a business problem, when in reality, they have a personal problem that is showing up as a business problem because they themselves are the business. So book number one is called 177 Mental Toughness Secrets of the world class. I buy this book for all of our clients when we start working with them. This book is based on interviews and observations of high performing individuals from athletes and authors to CEOs and army generals. I like this book because each lesson is boiled down to a short one page synopsis with a supporting quote and action step. It's really a reference on how to think and behave when you're trying to build something Big. Because it's short, you can use this book as a daily meditation and pick up a new lesson every day. It's pretty cool. By the way, there are links in the description of all the books that I share in this video, and those links support this channel. Book number two is called Psycho Cybernetics. This book is a little more dry than most other self-help books because it's rooted in logic and it was written a really long time ago. But thousands of other self-help books are pretty much based on this one. And it's my opinion that Great music producers have to be great leaders, and in order to be a great leader to others, you gotta be cool with yourself first. Most of us weren't drawn to music because we were trauma-free and had perfect lives, right? But remember that you're selling yourself in this business and it's really hard to sell something that you don't like. Next category up is sales, but don't let the word sales freak you out in the world of producing. Sales is just about being great at uncovering what a person or project really needs, determining the best way to approach it, and communicating the value of that approach so that it makes sense to whoever you're working with. Book number three is called Influence, The Psychology of Persuasion. And no, this book isn't about going out and trying to manipulate people into doing things that they don't want to do, so don't worry. Most producers are afraid to come off as being salesy or manipulative, and I'll say that if you aren't naturally that way, then you probably don't have that much to worry about. However, if you've ever asked yourself, why are so many people drawn to that other producer and not me, then this is a good book to read because it will help you learn how people tick when it comes to who they choose to trust and work with and take direction from. Like it or not, we live in an influence world, so it's just helpful to understand this stuff. And remember to always use your influence wisely and with the intention of creating great songs. Book number four is called Spin Selling, and this one is a favorite amongst dark label producers. Instead of using cheesy or slimy tactics to get people interested in your music production, spin selling is a framework that gets you really good at what's called consultative selling. So think of it this way. It's less like a used car salesman trying to upsell you on a car that you don't want, and it's more like a doctor asking relevant questions to understand your situation and prescribe the best treatment, which most of the time you don't object to. So get good at this framework and all of a sudden, more people that you talk to will have a budget. Next, we have the people category. As you probably know, the music business is a people business, especially for music producers, because many times they are advising and working directly with other people to facilitate the creative process and ensure that great songs are being made. And if you wanna know how great music producers are made, then make sure that you go subscribe to the Music Pro Daily podcast where you'll get more in-depth tutorials and insights into real working music producer situations. There's nothing else like it out there. Link is in the description below. Book number five is one that you might have heard about before and it's not a business book technically. However, it is a producer's guide to making great music and art. And it's much more specific to the music making process than Rick Rubin's book was 
although I got some valuable lessons out of that one too. This book is called Unlocking Creativity, and it's a masterclass on studio etiquette, session psychology, and collaborating with musicians to ensure that great songs are made. And the author produced one of my favorite songs when I was a young lad, Black Hole Sun by Soundgarden. So let's talk about book number six. Unfortunately, whether they are aware of this or not, there are a lot of producers that aren't providing an exceptional experience to the artists that hire them or collaborate with them. And I want you to ask yourself, have you actually ever spent any time studying client satisfaction? Well, now you can. Book number six is called What Customers Crave, How to Create Relevant and Memorable Experiences at Every Touchpoint. At the start of this video, back at book number one, I mentioned that we recently started purchasing that book for all of our clients when they start working with us. That is a simple example of a touch point. Book number six helps you lay out a roadmap to ensure that the people that you work with have a memorable experience working with you and will hopefully tell others about that experience. And book number seven ties into that as well. It's called The Coaching Habit. If you have any experience producing songs for other people, then you know that sometimes it can be difficult to get clear, honest, and concise answers or feedback from those that you're collaborating with especially in the revision stage of a project. And this book gives you practical questions that you can ask in order to uncover what somebody actually wants, and it trains you to be a better listener and leader when working with others. So that brings us to the final category here, which is called principles. These books didn't fit cleanly into any of the other categories, so they got their own. Let's take a look at these, and then I'll share the bonus book with you as well as a category of books that I purposely left out of this video, and I'll explain why a little later. Book number eight is a really big and really boring book, but after you read it, you won't be able to say that you don't understand business anymore. Book number eight is called The Personal MBA, Master the Art of Business. Basically, it covers every business function from value creation and marketing to sales and operations. In general, it's a bit overkill for a solo music producer, but you will definitely know how business works after you read it. And as a byproduct, you'll start to realize why the music business is kind of a weird one. Book number nine is called Obviously Awesome, How to Nail Product Positioning So Customers Can Love It, Buy It, Cut. Book number nine is called Obviously Awesome, How to Nail Product Positioning So Customers Can Buy It, man. I, can, I cannot say the name of this book. Book number nine is called Obviously Awesome, How to Nail Product Positioning So Customers Get It, Buy It, and Love It. The product in this scenario is you, the producer, and how you're positioned in the market is one of the make or break factors in my opinion because our market is so saturated. This book describes positioning as the act of deliberately defining how you are the best at something that a specific market cares a lot about. And it's because of positioning that world-class music producers find me, a dude on the internet, and hire my company to help them increase their demand as a producer. It's a pretty powerful thing. And book number 10 is one that I recommend often to our producers who are already making great money, but are still working themselves to the bone, even though they don't need to do that anymore. Book number 10 is called Buy Back Your Time. And it helps producers make the transition from working hard to working smart by leveraging the money that they are already earning. You will eventually get to a point in your career where working harder is not going to solve your problems anymore. And I hope that every producer watching this video gets to that point because it means that you did something right. Now you may have noticed that there is something missing from this business book list, and that's a book on money, on personal finance. Why would I not include a book on money in a business book list? I do have a few recommendations on that topic, but it kind of varies based on person to person, depending on their situation. However, in the near future, we will be creating an entire YouTube video that talks about producer finances. So make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so that you can be notified about future videos. And now for the bonus. Almost every producer I talk to, both new and established, all struggle with doing what they know they need to be doing to grow their business and doing it consistently. And in order for them to do that well, they have to break bad habits and patterns. But relying solely on your own willpower leads to a lot of false starts, confusion, and frustration. So the bonus book is called Willpower Doesn't Work. 
And I don't have a copy right now because I gave mine away to somebody and completely forgot who it was. But this book leans into the fact that isolation is not a great way to solve problems and instead argues that external factors, environments, and systems play a significant role in determining success. And I've seen this firsthand because part of Dark Label is that it's a highly vetted community that literally forces you to level up or you will feel out of place. That doesn't mean that everybody's perfect. None of them are perfect, nor am I. But a supportive environment of working producers will set a bar and a standard for you that could never be replicated in isolation, even if you have some cool daily planner that you use. Links to learn more about Dark Label and what we do are in the description below. And if you want to see some of the producers from our community, then click this playlist and learn from their stories of how they went from being uncertain about their careers to being in high demand. Peace out.